Hello, I'm Colin Chapman. Welcome to AIA New South Wales. It's no secret that Australia could become the biggest world exporter of LNG, that's liquefied natural gas. But it probably won't, because of a number of decisions and actions by Australians themselves that are standing in the way. It's called shooting yourself in the foot. And New South Wales and Queensland are likely to feel the pain most, gas shortages leading to higher prices. Nari Palmer is a Fulbright scholar who studied energy policy at Princeton and now is a senior project officer in the New South Wales government, advising the Minister of Energy and Resources. She came to the Glover Cottages to explain why early optimism has evaporated. Well, I'd say it's a number of factors, and one of those is the high Australian dollar compared to the US price. It's more expensive to do business in Australia now. Another significant factor would be the cost of doing business in that our wage rates are very high. Um, our productivity is relatively low. It's 30% cheaper to conduct a project in America than it is in Australia as in the LNG industry. So it is a significant cost. Um, another issue is the environmental regulations. We have several layers of environmental approvals that are required at the state and the federal level, and this is inefficient. We also have print policies between states that makes approval processes for one company difficult because you have to get different um, assessments done in every state that you're in. So it's a number of factors, but those are the most significant. Nairi, how big an issue is this sudden emergence of gas from the United States? Well, Australia is going to be the largest exporter of LNG in the world, starting from 2016, bigger than even Qatar. But there's a short window of opportunity that we have because American prices are so low and the production is so high, and that's going to flood the Asia Pacific market with gas and compete against Australian gas. Um, this has been facilitated by um, technological developments in America um, with coal seam and shale gas development. It's also been facilitated by the broadening of the Panama Canal, where ships, LNG ships, will be able to move from the east coast of America through the canal and into the Pacific. Because of the issues you mentioned earlier, has international investment in Australian gas just dropped off? There has been a drop off in investment and there's been a revision of assets in Australia. For example, Shell has pulled out of their investment in the LNG plant in Queensland and is rationalising its portfolio, but that, that's been taken over by another company, so the project's still in train. There's a change in, in that Kuwait and China are trying to invest in Australia at the moment and take over from the gap that Shell has left. So it could be looked as a drop-off, it could be just a shift. Now, you're a policy analyst. What's the solution to the problem? Well, I think that the facilitation of coal seam gas and shale gas development is absolutely necessary. Um, but in the context of um, the environmental ramifications, there has to be conditions of project consent which manage the impact on the aquifers and on land use. And there has to be a lot more community consultation by the companies that are doing the explore, exploration and production of gas. Um, to win back their social licence to operate. And I think that that's the two most important things in the gas future. <laughs> that's easier said than done, isn't it? Oh, very much. Um, there's such opposition against coal seam gas, and although it's a solution that could work, it may not be workable within the political environment. And I think that also um, exploration for more gas within remote areas that have in less environmental impact and less impact on land users would be a significant um, improvement in, um, would lead to a decrease in opposition against. Nairi, thank you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. And you can find out more about our upcoming events on our website or on Facebook at AIANSW. Please come and join us. We meet every week. Our charges are really quite modest and include a glass of wine and refreshments. You'll also meet people who share your interest in Australia's foreign affairs. Bye for now.